Nice to see you all. Thank you for your time. So, Joey and Kirk, um, we're now a few weeks since the premiere. How's it been for you? It's been uh, it's been fun, honestly. It's been really fun seeing people's reactions to season four. Um, and I know y'all in the UK are getting episodes one and two as well. Um, I'm very curious to see internationally how people respond to it too. It's it's been, you know, there have been some people with smiles. There have been some people with with tears. Um, like every chosen season, really. You know what I mean? Um, but it's it's been fun, honestly. It's been cool to see people's responses, and and we are really excited and gearing up for season five already as well. So we're we're looking forward to it. Amazing. And how about you, Kirk? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, it's it's such a, a trip to, especially on social media and other places. You know, we had, uh, uh, I know you guys are going to have one and two uh, in theaters. Here we've had one, two, and three, and we're about to do four, five, and six. So it's pretty exciting to see this stuff roll out. And um, it's very personally rewarding, too. And it's also great because I know that it's going to have an impact on people's lives. Yeah, absolutely. It's so wild to see a TV show aired and premiered in, in a cinema or a theatre, as you'd call it. Um, and it's so cool to see how The Chosen has developed from season one to this point. Were you expecting this when you first joined the show, Kirk? Uh, no, ma'am. Not at all. I've been, uh, I, I always say it, but uh, I've been friends with and have worked with Dallas for over 23, 24 years now. I guess I got to do the math so I know the answer to that question. But you know, we have been making films together for that amount of time and not with much success. So when he told me about The Chosen, you know, I love him and adore him and yeah, let's rock and roll. And so I, I was grateful as an actor, you're grateful to be to work, be working, be working and be a part of something. But no, I, I don't think any of us expected to do what it what it has. We started off with four episodes and then all of us thought maybe that was going to be it, but now it's just ha ha bang exploded. So no, but it's it's really really fantastic, and part of the joy for me is seeing his success and his lovely wife Amanda. So all those kids be born. So to see them have success after this, you know, he's like a 25 year overnight sensation. You know, so I'm just so happy for him more than anything else. Um, yeah, the hard work pays off, eh? Yes, ma'am. And prayer how about you, too. Sorry? As does prayer. Absolutely. <laughs> how about you, Joey? Because obviously you joined a bit later on in the series. I did, yeah. I, I actually came on for literally the last week of season one. Um, and, you know, you, you get this audition as an actor and you you go and you do it. We didn't, we didn't know what we were getting into. We This was this you know, little indie web series, little engine that could kind of thing, if you will, that has now turned into this global phenomenon is is distributed uh, by Lionsgate, you know, over 700 million views and, and multiple countries, you know, huge fan bases in, in Brazil and the UK and all these places. So it's it's a dream, you know, it's a dream to be a part of. And, and I, I look forward to the continued success of the show and seeing what it brings up for everybody. Definitely. So, so Joey, um, doubting Thomas is such a well-known phrase around the world, uh -huh. even for people who don't know the Bible, aren't Christians. It's just sort of a, a phrase in amongst English speakers. Did you feel a sense of pressure playing that role? And do you? Do Not you feel a sense of pressure? Sure. Um, I think there's pressure with any, any role that an actor takes on, you know, d depending on what it is. Of course, with content like we have, these are people that have been known for years and years and years and years and that people have a genuine connection to their identity with, you know? Um, so I, I, I think it's just, we trust the process. We trust uh, Dallas, Ryan and Tyler, the writers uh, to give us beautiful pieces of work. And we all trust one another to, to do this together. You know, we know it's not one individual effort. It's a collective community thing. Um, and I will say that I, I do think doubting Thomas is a bit of an unfair title. I think he should be called Questioning Thomas, and I'll leave it at that. Great answer. I'm going to just call him Thomas. <laughs> I like that too. I think he's a very realistic character um, because some of his reactions to things that happen, I think we'd all react to that way. 100%. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and so, Kirk, 
Um, obviously, the Romans are the bad guys here. No, they're not. Has it been fun to play the villain slightly? No. I'm... All due respect, the Romans are not the bad guys. Everybody has a justified reason for why they do what they do. Rome did amazing things, not to mention the calendar, <laughs> clean water, aqueducts, medicine, <clears throat> roads, infrastructure. It's easy to vilify. Seriously, it's easy to vilify the Romans. But, you know, you know, everybody has a justified reason for why they do what they do. It, you know, if in a, in a story, if you don't have a good villain, your hero is not that great. The stronger your villain, the stronger your hero. Uh, your hero needs something to butt up against. And the more charming, the more realistic, the more you can relate to the villain, the sweeter the victory when the hero wins. So you have to have it. It's You have to have that antagonist and you need to like the antagonist. So I never judge a character. I'm sure Joey's the same way. You can't judge a character you play. You have to justify everything you say and do. So I don't think we're villains. I think we're an integral part of, of, of the story. Uh, and I think it's necessary to tell a great story. What are you going to do if you don't have anything to butt up against? What are the... Jesus is just going to walk around and do whatever he wants to do. That would be, you know, pretty boring. That's the definition of drama is conflict. So anyway, sorry to miss words, but we're no, not. <laughs> absolutely. Great answer. I love that. Um, it actually brings me on nicely to my next question for you. So during season three and now what I've seen of season four, Gaius is developing into a bit more of a complex character with a slightly kinder side. So without giving too much away, what can the audience expect from him? Well, I think he's walking a tightrope. There's no question. I'm following orders, but not following orders. And so I think season four, it's, uh, you know, it's going to start hitting the fan, so to speak, <laughs> for a lot of characters and a lot of things. And I think Gaius is, it's definitely coming to a head. Uh, Quintus is getting more and more angry at my inability to, do exactly what he's asking me to do. So I think we can expect things really heating up and clashing. Mm, exciting. Um, and Joey, it's been so lovely to see the romance blossom between Thomas and Raymer over the seasons. Were you surprised to see this in the script? Uh, yes and no. And the reason I say that is because um, Dallas will sometimes for whatever reason, while we film, mention things um, that are coming up. You know, we we usually don't know anything that's going on when a new season happens. But sometimes he'll just, you know, say something and you kind of look at him like, wait, what? What do, you, what, do you, what do you mean? What are you guys are doing that? So I, I will say it's been very cool to, to have something like that, particularly in the story where, you know, stuff like this isn't discussed that much, I guess, in the source material. And I think it's a really lovely way for fans to be able to connect with you know either maybe something that they're going through or, or love interest that they have or whatever it is and, and see these two develop um a lovely relationship in a time where maybe that stuff is not so easily shown if that makes sense you know based off of the conditions of of the religion and all this kinds of stuff so i i think it's a really exciting thing and i can tell you that season four picks up where Season three left off. Excellent. So we all know how the greatest story ever told ends, but your characters don't. How does that influence how you play them? I'll go to you first, Kirk. Well, I mean, it's interesting. Gaius technically isn't a, a character in the Bible. It seems the rumor has it that he's based on a lot of different characters, perhaps. I, I don't know. Ryan, Tyler, and Dallas, uh, as Joey was saying, do such a great job of integrating it. So, you know what? I have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> you know, uh, Joey mentioned it. We're about to uh, uh, start season five and get our scripts. So I can't wait to sit down and go, uh, what happens next? So I really don't know. So it's as much of a mystery to me as it is to the fans. I think Joey kind of knows where he's going but uh, not Gaius. Yeah, so I'll be the same, to see. The same question, Joe, the same question in terms of how you play the role without it looking like you know where it's going. 
Sure. I think what's so wonderful about The Chosen is it's based off of a source material that I think has very little detail in it. You know, like when, when it, when there are characters or people that are being spoken about, it's usually something along the lines of they did this thing and people saw it and everything was good or, or whatever it is, you know? So what, what's so fun about this show is Dallas, Tyler and Ryan within, you know, the realm of possibilities of what the story is have so much creative leeway to make these people real human beings so although we do know what Thomas is, is his title is, you know, historically doubting Thomas, um, it's going to be cool to see why he becomes that, you know, or why people call him that. And that's, to me, one of the most exciting things about working on the show is being able to, to see how they masterfully weave these details in about each person and each disciple and, and the Romans even to get them to be full, beautiful human beings. Excellent. Thank you so much. We are out of time. Uh, I hope you enjoy your next call with your next uh, crew. But yeah, lovely to meet you and enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Lucy. to meet you, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Yeah, cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, hey you guys. <laughs> hey you guys. Hey, hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys. Hey you guys.